I had an idea last night for my final base, and it's pretty big to say the least. I'm thinking of making a tower from around Y level 0 to somewhere near height limit. I have the area I want to use, but it's a village, so I have to capture all of them first and fix that up. Honestly, I don't know who the fuck to trust is my friend or my foe. I'm a exit bro. Yeah, she give me that clay my as well. I remember back when I was younger, I was happy. Now I just feel like no one understand me. I'm good at all this silly, I'm about to blame me. Baby's yellow text. She wanna give me like candy. Run up the racks, track me. I run up the racks like an athlete. Big facts, you're the dick, six flags, ballin' like dick flags. Told her I love I ain't really mean that. Okay, now that the villagers are secure, first I'll show you guys the tower dimensions I used from this website. All I had to do was type in an ideal length and it gave me a circle, block for block. So I copied it in game and was left with this. Now that the outline was done, all I had to do for the next while was dig and dig and dig and dig until finally the outline was empty. It only took four days. I don't think it's even, but it looks sick. The dimensions of each floor will be a circle, similar to the hole, but this time only being 35 blocks long. As I said earlier for the walls as well, it will be a mix of a couple blocks just to keep it interesting. The layout for each floor will be 7 blocks tall, and between each floor I'll have a 3 block gap just to compensate for further possible redstone use, and to make every floor individual as possible. Okay, so as seen before, that string of events was recorded and edited two weeks ago. From that point, Christmas was arriving and so I made the other video where I toured other people's bases for the holidays. While I was traveling to someone's base for that video though, I just so happened to find the literal perfect cave opening for the tower I wanted to build. So, I moved. But I ran into a problem regarding my peripherals as opposed to in-game. Oh sh- I have one less keyboard now. So recently I spilled coffee on my keyboard, and I had to get a new one, so naturally, I was sucked into the rabbit hole of mechanical keyboards while I was looking around. Not that I wasn't with my previous HyperX, but regardless, I took it as more of an opportunity to dive deeper into the specs. So with days of research, a couple clicks, and a little bit of patience, my parts arrived. Well, by parts, I mean a pre-built. I am thinking of getting mint chocolate chip switches later, but they're out of stock as of now, so I'll check back. The board itself is the Evo Maker EP84 white version. Naturally, I wanted to get something hot swappable because I planned on getting those mint chocolate chips well in advance. I mean, just listen to the sound. Anyways, outside the box comes the board itself, obviously. A little manual for color controls, I'm just gonna put that to the side for now. Alongside the cable, which is a stock, non-braided USB Type-C connector. It also comes with a keycap puller and a cheap switch puller, but the fact that it comes with them at all is actually pretty nice for this keyboard. As I said earlier, I do plan on putting different switches in, so this will actually come in handy, seeing as I'm not a keyboard fanatic by any means. Looking more at the board itself, we can see that on the base it has two height shifting feet to flip up and down, with four rubber feet in each corner as well. Something I thought was actually pretty handy was regarding the USB Type-C connection. It has the standard plug of course, but with it you can see that it has these grooves for the cable to sit in so you can wire it with a little bit more control on the direction. Of course having your own Type-C cable might conflict with this seeing as braided cables tend to be thicker, but I just thought it was cool. Now let's do a sound test- oh wait hold on let me just get rid of this stupid red dragon. There we go. Okay, I ordered these with Gatoron Blues because clickies don't really bother me too much, but we are planning on modding this keyboard a little bit so stick around and see more of that. Now that the dry test was done, I put a mouse pad on this time. Okay, nothing too crazy with the sound difference, but take that as you will. But now it's time to mod it. I originally just wanted to try the tape mod, but seeing as it conveniently came in foam, I thought I could use that for the bass as well. But first, we have to take off all the keycaps. After a little bit of research, I found out how to take the board apart. Since it has no screws on the bottom part, I looked at the top, thinking it was near the switches, but I literally had to pry it open, which was kind of weird, but at the same time, it was kind of nice not having to use a screwdriver. Once the board was open, I simply detached the cord connecting to the PCB, cut a decent bit of foam, 
and put two layers of masking tape on the back of the PCB and was good to go. I just want to say it now so that it's stated, I seriously, seriously recommend you guys actually go watch videos if you want to modify your keyboard just so that you don't break anything that you don't know about. And it also gives you a learning experience, so that's always nice. All I had left to do was put the keycaps back on and sound test this thing. Yes, I admit the next sound test has three different layers of mouse pads, but this is just to capture the true difference between the first and now last sound test. With me not actually having a whole lot of experience into keyboards, I found this project really enlightening, mainly because it proves that anyone can do it. With the new switches coming in the near future, I am very excited to start crafting the sound that I actually want out of this keyboard. Thank you all for watching. Feel free to comment the keyboard you have below, and make sure to like and subscribe if you are new. Hashtag